Last week, <coughs> we started getting into PHP and server-side scripting. And one of the things that we observed was the difference in the roles between server-side scripting and client-side scripting. Server-side scripting is responsible for creating web pages on the fly based on any number of different parameters. Some of those parameters might be what the user has entered in via a form. That's a very common way that server-side scripting can customize a page. Server-side scripting oftentimes interacts with a database. Server-side scripting can look at other information that's part of your request that you make when you request a page from a server. And that can include, <coughs> excuse me, that could include things such as your location. Any idea how it knows your location? So, for example, classic example I use in all my classes when I'm illustrating this point. I go to Google and I search for Italian restaurants and I get a list of restaurants that are in the Illyria area. Alright, Detroit Road, West River Road, Broad Street, and so on down the line. Any idea how it get how it knows where we're at? Knows by the IP address. And how does it get the IP address? Somehow obtains it from where you're searching it from? Yeah, that's part of your request. In other words, it needs to know what computer to send the answer to, right? So it needs to know your IP address. That's all part of the, the HTTP protocol and all that. And... Um, so therefore, you make a request, included in your request is your IP address. Your IP address is not necessarily a foolproof method of determining your location, but it generally can give at least somewhat of an approximate location, all right? Because typically IP addresses are given out to internet service providers, and so they know that this is through such and such internet service providers, so chances are that we're in um, Northeast Ohio. The point of all this is, is this server-side scripting runs on the server and it is run as part of the process of creating a web page, as opposed to what we saw on client-side scripting, where the client-side scripting was run on a completed web page and was used for us to sort of tweak a completed web page. All right. So we could, for example, do mouse overs and put our mouse over something and have something appear or disappear. All right? We already have the page out there. We're simply making elements of it dynamically appear and disappear. Server-side scripting has a different purpose. Now, the whole point of server-side scripting, though, is that you must request your page through a web server. All right. In other words, you can't simply double click on the HTML file or PHP file anymore All right, because that's a recipe. For the recipe to come to life and actually make a completed web page, it has to be run through a server and some processing needs to occur. Now, where do you get a web server from? Can you use any computer as a web server? Can you use, let me, let me rephrase that. Well, let, me, let me first of all think of what I want to ask, and then I can rephrase it. Can I just take any computer and start using it immediately as a web server? No. All right. Can I make any computer run web server software? Probably, yes. So how do you obtain it? Well, it depends on the platform that you have for... For uh, Mac, typically these things are installed already, and all you have to do is enable them. Depending, uh, I forget at what version uh, of the operating system, they started um, 
they, they changed the defaults and so certain things were not def were defaulted not to be installed instead of to be installed or, or running instead of not running or something like that. I don't remember. So with Mac, you probably just have to find out how to activate it, all right? With Windows, you can install it, and you can install it a couple different ways, all right? The PHP we're going to cover for cover in this class can run through one of two main different web servers, either the IIS web server or the Apache web server. Um, I lose track of all the Windows licensing issues about who's allowed to run IIS and who's not allowed to run IIS. So usually what I recommend, unless you feel like wrestling with that, is looking to install some sort of Apache installation. Now you do have to make sure that you're not running IIS as well. All right. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that more in a minute, because if you're running two web servers, then they're going to interfere with each other. But there's a nice package called WAMP. WAMP server. Windows development uh, environment allows you to create web applications with Apache, PHP, and MySQL. Essentially, the starter pack for doing open source sort of uh, open source style web development using PHP in the Apache web server. Typically, it is pretty easy to install. You can download it. All right. Now, Dave, I know you mentioned having a problem with the 64-bit um, um, at one point. Yeah, it seemed to be 32, it seemed to be the natural okay. fit at the time. All right, and again, possibly, you know, for your machine, that, that very well could have been. Not only do you need the web server software, of which Apache is one of the common ones, you need to make sure that you have PHP uh, running and installed as well. The nice thing is this does everything for you. You could go in and you could piecemeal uh, install Apache, install PHP, and so on. But with this, you can sort of start things up and run it um, all at once. So there is a Mac version of this, I believe, um, as well. And um, one of the first things I would suggest you to do this week is make sure that you have uh, whatever machine you're going to do your work on, make sure that you have PHP installed. Um, we do have PHP installed on our machines and lab, and the, along with the web server. So you need this to break the PHP code? Yeah, you, to, to, run, to, to run the PHP oh, code. Okay, so you could still maybe do, like, you know, no pad plus plus? Yeah, you could, you, could, you could edit it, but there would really be no way to test it. Okay. Right. I mean, in a pinch, you know... Yeah. Would Visual Studio work for PHP? That is a darn good question. I am not sure. Visual Studio would provide you with um, the development web server. I'm not sure if Visual, uh, uh, if, if, uh, Visual Studio intrinsically understands PHP or if you'd like to have to add, add on that. Okay. Last week, if I remember right, we didn't have a web server installed here. We didn't have a functional web server installed here. Let's go and check, first of all, what that means to say if you have a web server installed. So I mentioned before something about, like, don't install the web server if you already have one running. How you can tell if you have a web server installed is by going up to your browser window in the address bar and typing in localhost. All right, we get something like this, something that does not look like an error, all right? That means that we have a, um, uh, we have uh, Microsoft uh, IIS information, Internet Information Services installed on this machine. So we're good to go. I also believe PHP has been installed on that, on this machine, and we'll, we'll check that in a minute. Localhost simply says... All right, simply says, 
request the page on the web server for this machine, that this machine is running. All right? So when we're developing stuff, we're going to be essentially the client and the server together. We're going to be running it off of our own web server, and uh, we'll be the, the client to it as well. All right. Now, with every web server, there is the root directory where the files belong. And in the case of IIS, of IIS, by default, the files end up in CINETPUB WW root. So that's considered to be sort of like the root directory for that. Now, we probably will talk a little bit more about web servers um, throughout the semester, but to start off now, let's just say that we need to put our files in this folder. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create create a page called monday.php and I'm going to edit it and Again, we talked about this a little bit last time. A PHP page is simply an HTML page with sections of PHP code. And those sections of code can do stuff that's dynamic. That is, it can do some processing, it can access a database, that sort of thing, so that the results are not going to be the identical each time. Let's do about the simplest thing that we can do as far as this goes, and that is to echo hello world, because I think that's the example we had last time. All right. This indicates again that we're not in HTML land, that we're in PHP language. What an echo means is an echo says, all right, take this and send it to the client. Take this and send it to whoever requested this page. So as we mentioned before, we have a mix on this page of some of the stuff being in plain old HTML, all right, and some of the stuff being in PHP. I'm going to save it. Now, for me to run this, I can't just open it up in the browser. What do I get if I do that? Nothing. Because browsers don't understand PHP. Browsers understand what browsers always have understood. That is HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So for us to actually view this page, we have to run it through the web server. 
And for us to run it through the web server, it needs to be in the proper folder. And again, in the case of Windows running IIS, the default is C, INET, pub, www root. This would be how all the machines in the lab would be set up, by the way, as well. So if I copy that into here, all right, yeah, we want to move it. All right. I'm going to get rid of these other files. So now we have a, full, a file called monday.php, which is in our C, INET, pub, WW root folder. That is our web pages root folder. How do we request that from the server? What do we put in? We put the name of our server in, first of all, which is what? Localhost. And then we put in the path from the root to that file. Now that file's already in the root, so we should just be able to type in localhost slash monday.php. And there we go. Hello world. Yay. All right. Let's try to do a little more dynamic stuff than this. And let me go. Here shows me how I can do a lot of fun stuff with date. I'm just going to copy this. Pop this in here. Save it. And hit refresh. And it says Monday, 2nd of March, 2015, 9 Now, we can't tell from this example because remember that in our case, my machine sitting here is both the server and the client. But this is the date, current date and time on the web server. So if the web server was in the United Kingdom and we were testing this out here, we would see the date and time in the United Kingdom, not the date and time of the client. All right. Now, if I do a view source, what do I see? I see, I don't see any PHP anymore, right? Why? Because the server did its processing and outputted any of the stuff from PHP to the browser. Anytime where you see echo is where the, browser, or where the server is sending stuff to the client, to the entity that is making the request. All right. Questions about this? Right. Now, let's get into one of the classic uses of PHP, and that is using PHP to process a form. All right. So, let me create a simple little HTML form.
create my form tag. And I'm sick of doing centigrade to Fahrenheit. So I'm going to do dollars to English pounds. And forgive me for not making the world's loveliest form here. Pardon me? Thank you. I'm going to save this in my web server's root. Pardon me? Yes. move them in there. start out just by putting dummy code in the process page. And let me go and move those files into their proper destination. to request form from the web server. So I will go and type in form localhost slash form.html. We have that value here. We type in some value and click convert and we get called that second page. So now I put in the value, click convert, and it tells me it's processing it. How does it know to call that second page? It knows to call that second page because the action 
of the form is set to be process.php. The form itself can be a, a plain old HTML file, right? Because the form is, uh, is not doing any processing. It's static.html. So we could just make that plain old HTML, which in fact we did. The action being process.php is the name of the file that we are going to call when we submit this form. All right. Get relates to the manner which we're going to pass the data from the first page to the second page. Okay, so let's actually make this work. All right, let's look first of all and see convert dollars to pounds. One dollar equals 0.65 British pounds sterling. Easy enough. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to grab the value from the first page and then do a calculation on it, multiply it by 0.65, and then we have to display the results. Okay? So we know that this block has to be PHP code. is a weakly typed language, which means that you do not need to declare variables. You just start using them. And again, believe me, that is more of a curse than a blessing. You might think, oh, that's great. I could just start you. No, it's not a good thing. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the value from the form. Now, let's look at this closely. Notice the URL, process.php, that's the name of our script, question mark, txt dollars equals 122. Where does it get the name txt dollars from? It gets the name from the name of the form field. We had talked before in class about form fields having both IDs and names. Well, now we're actually going to use both of them, or at least we have the potential to use both of them. The ID is something that's very convenient to use in JavaScript. All right. The name, however, is what the server-side script requires. That's the manner by which it's going to be passed from the form page to the process page. All right. So, if I wanted to write some JavaScript with this, I would have to use and have to create an ID. But it will be the name that is used to pass the data. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to pull from the query string the value that has the name of txt dollar. looks like what I want to use. So I'm going to say dollar sign, pardon the pun, dollars equals So that's declaring the variable. That is declaring the variable, right. Just starting to use the variable. Again, break. 
break this down. First of all, variable names in PHP start with a dollar sign. All right, I guarantee I'll make that mistake five or six times per class. Maybe not today because it's fresh on my mind, but like starting next time, we'll be, we'll be making this uh, mistake frequently. All right. To declare a variable, you just start using it. To grab a value from the query string, you use dollar sign underscore get. And dollar sign underscore get corresponds to the get method. All right. So that'll pull a value from the query string. And what you have within the square brackets is the name of the thing that you want to pull from the query string. So what do I want to pull from the query string? I want to pull txt dollars. Now, keep in mind, I could have several things on the query string. All right? And the dollar sign underscore get allows us to pick the particular one that we want and store it in a value. The query string really is an array, what they call an associative array. An associative array where the elements of the array have names in addition to having like an index. So the name of this element is txt name. So everything on the on, uh, in the form that has a name is going to get passed on the query string. This will allow us to pluck that off and to do something with it. Now, pounds equals 0.65 times dollars. Now, I want to send the answer back out. How do I do that? Okay, we've, we've sent data back to the browser already. Echo. Echo or print. So I can say echo dollar sign pounds. Let's save this. And if I type in $10, it should say zero. Ha. Now the TXT name, does that have to match the same as the text box? Yes, it does. And the text box is what? TXT dollars. Good. Uh, Good eye on that. So let's try that again. And there we go, six dollars and fifty cents. Or six six point five pounds. Now <coughs> one thing that's nice uh, in PHP is what are called magic quotes. Alright? Double quotes are magic quotes because what I can do is in other languages, if I wanted to print out a message that said the value of X dollars equals Y pounds, I would have to concatenate that all together. If you put within PHP's magic quotes, the double quotes, it does a concatenation for you without having to write the concatenation. So, in other words, if I say And then in double quotes, dollar sign dollars, dollars, is the same as dollar sign pounds, pounds. What PHP will do is it will plug in the value of the variable, dollar sign dollars, and dollar sign pounds, right into that expression. So it's a pretty streamlined way to doing it uh, as compared to other 
languages where you'd have to concatenate a bunch of strings together. So now if we go and do it, we get $10 is the same as 6.5 pounds. Now, single quotes are muggle quotes, I guess. They, they, they're not magical. So if you have single quotes, it doesn't do anything special with it. It's only the double quotes that does that. All right. So you can use this to your advantage in, in writing expressions like that. type in some bogus value and it says zero pounds. How do you suppose we can fix that? This is a case of PHP being a weekly type language actually isn't so good. In other words, it looks at this and it says, hmm, well, I'm going to treat this like a number. And, well, what is SS? I don't know. We'll count it as a zero. I think it gets worse than that. It does. 6S is the same as 3.9. What did it do? Well, it did, but how did it do? How did it come up with the calculation of 3.9? Pardon me? It ignored the S. It ignored the first non-numeric stuff that it runs into. So if I do 10, all right, it's going to process that as though it is 10. All right. Well, that's not good. All right. So we probably should have some tests for that. Now, we could certainly do some testing on the client side. That would give us sort of the win-win situation of being able to give immediate feedback to the user without having sending it to the server and not burdening the server if they put bad data in. But remember, people can easily defeat JavaScript by turning it off. So if this was some sort of mission critical thing, even if we had validation on the client side, would put validation on the server side as well. So let's see, how can I tell if something is numeric? Oh, look there, PHP underscore is numeric. Finds whether a variable is a number or a numeric string. So what I could do is something like this. Here's one thing that's nice, is that although there's some quirks about PHP, like the magic quotes and variables starting with dollar signs, the syntax of most of your statements are going to be the same as in JavaScript. So an if statement, if you know what an if statement looks like in JavaScript, you know what an if statement looks like in PHP. Likewise, a for loop. The one other sort of quirkiness is when, we, when you get into global variables. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. But what I could do is I could do something like this. If it's numeric, Otherwise, 
put in a number. And there it caught the garbage where the first part of it was numeric and the second part wasn't. Okay, so to review, PHP code needs to run through the server. And if you have a form that submits to a PHP code, you have to request the HTML form for the server and so that in turn the processing page will be requested through the server. Processing form data is a common use of PHP code. All right. A form calls PHP by a combination of the method and the action. The method describes how the data is going to be passed. And in our case, it's the get method. I typically would use this, especially as we're starting out, we're testing, because that actually shows you what gets passed on the query string. The action is the name of the script that actually gets called. Once we call the script, then, we can grab the value from the query string in this manner, put it in a variable, variable starting with a dollar sign. We can then do whatever sort of calculations or anything else we need to do. And when we're done and we want to output something to the client, we are going to output using an echo or a print. Now notice, this is a PHP code. This is what runs on the server. If I look to see what gets delivered to the client by doing a view source here, I don't see any of that PHP code. I just see the end result of what the, uh, what the server has prepared and sent to the client. Now, your first assignment is to come up with a Mad Lib where you take and you create a poem and then you plop in words from a form. And if I'm not, not mistaken, I asked you to try to use jQuery to validate the form in addition to that. What I would make sure is whatever machine you're going to be using, make sure that you have PHP up and running on it. And I can assist you with that. Um, because again, for the most part, that's largely going to be an individual issue. Um, the, the WAMP um, generally installs pretty easily, but if you do have problems, it's best to look at the individual case. And then work on processing form data by, in your Mad Lib, you're not going to do any math on the values, but you are going to take the value that was entered in on a form and stick it in the middle of the poem or the lyrics or whatever. Any questions on this? All right, let's go to lab.